What's going on everyone, it's the Fake Weeb here, and today we got one of the most hyped up chapters in Jujutsu Kaisen. I swear this whole Sendai colony has been on fire. We finally get to see Rika and Yuta together, along with the explanation of Rika, their abilities, how it works, and just the awesome fighting panels of both of them going hard against the pillars. But uh, yeah, as always guys, before we start the review, I would kindly appreciate it if you can drop a like on the video video as that would help me out a ton and consider subscribing to the channel for some more awesome Jujutsu Kaisen manga videos appearing in your sub feed. With all that out of the way, let's get back to the video. Alright, so we start from where we left off in the last chapter with Yuta calling out Rika. Now ever since Yuta returned to the story, we've only seen him partially spawn Rika, however in that last chapter, he calls Rika's full form and it's now revealed. It's pretty cool to see Takako and Ishigori's reaction to seeing Rika for the first time because Yuta was trying not to use Rika when fighting Kidorishi, so just to Seeing Rika was totally unexpected for them. We then see Rika opening her chest which has cursed tools stored inside and asks Yuta which weapons he wants. At this point, we finally get the long awaited explanation of Rika, but just before we get onto that, we first need to know the abilities that the old Rika in Volume 0 possessed. The old Rika had immense amounts of cursed energy and was able to copy and store cursed techniques alongside cursed tools. We're able to see one of the curse techniques being copied here as Yuta uses Inumaki's curse speech in volume 0 and in this chapter. Now we all know what happened to Rika in the end of volume 0 and it stays that way. The actual Rika in volume 0 is indeed dead. However, this Rika we're seeing with Yuta acts as the external storage or a superficial hard drive that Rika had left for Yuta to use whenever he calls upon the ring. And in that hard drive contains all the copied cursed techniques of fully manifested Rika and its amount of cursed energy for Yuta to use. Which he does at this moment and is why Takako mentions that his cursed energy level is filling up again. The best way to put it in perspective is to think of Yuta as a computer and the ring as a USB device. Whenever Yuta puts on the ring, the USB device gets plugged into the computer containing all files regarding Rika of her cursed techniques, cursed tools, and cursed energy. Yuta can choose among the files that he'd like to use. However, Yuta can only use this Rika for 5 minutes and rightfully so because I feel like it would be super OP as if he's not already already powerful enough. And some of you might be wondering, well then, how can Yuta partially spawn Rika without the ring? It's still not the same Rika, right? Correct. The ring is only used as a medium for whenever Yuta wants to combine his cursed energy and use a fully manifested Rika. This Rika in itself is just a creature, possibly a Shikigami that's made up of raw cursed energy and the cursed techniques that were copied up to that point. If you're still confused about Rika's status, then don't worry as I'll make a separate, very simple, in-depth explanation sometime this week. Continuing on with the chapter, Yuta chooses one of the tools from Rika, which looks like some cybernetic arm from the Winter Soldier. Rika then goes to attack Takako as she's prepared to fight and says not to underestimate her, but Yuta suddenly uses the cursed speech ability which stuns Takako and allows Yuta and Rika to destroy her, and I'm actually surprised that Takako isn't dead from from the barrages of attacks because she was really getting the punches back and forth from Yuta and Rika. Ishigori sees this and obviously wants some of the action for himself. We know that Ishigori is very hungry for fights, especially if it's by a worthy opponent. And so it's decided that Yuta will battle Takako and Rika will battle Ishigori. Ishigori attempts to beam Rika, but she actually blocks it with her hands just like Yuta did in the last chapter. However, that blast did did her Rika and she absolutely rages at Ishigori. Rika lands a powerful blow on him, but Ishigori returns one right back and I'm actually surprised that Ishigori was able to send Rika flying. He seems all riled up and is craving for more. He says, 
shall we feast now? And oh boy, a feast is about to happen. But before that, we then move to Yuta versus Yuro, and we see that the cursed tool on Yuta's arm is creating these sort of small clones of Rika, which Yuro easily dispatches with her sky warping curse technique. She starts going on about the Fujiwaras again, saying, it's always you Fujiwaras that are blocking my way. Are you that scared of what I can become? Then we get some further details. The Fujiwara family's assassination group, the Jetsu Getsu Seishinte unit, wholeheartedly devoted to their task living in the shadows to the point they are often denied even a name. Yuro ponders, he gave someone like me a name just to execute me as a scapegoat for him killing his own people. So that's pretty messed up. The way I see it is that a Fujiwara guy told Yuro to kill his own people as she becomes the scapegoat, the one who's made to take the blame and fall for the situation. Back to the fight, Yuta attacks Yuro by using Druv's curse technique and this is when Yuro realizes that Yuta is not mainly a cursed speech user but his curse technique is actually mimicry, in other words, copy to copy one's curse technique. Yuta goes in for a huge swing with his prosthetic looking arm and it sends Yuro flying to where Ishigori and Rika are. Yuta comes back for another swing but this time Yuro blocks it. I don't know what my ancestors may have done to you but if you only live for yourself there will always come a day where you can't go on. And so this is Yuta basically going back to chapter 176 when he figured out that Yuro had no lovers or friends and that she's in the culling games living only for herself. Killing all these sorcerers seeking out a fight, Yuta doesn't understand how Yuro can be so desperate for her own sake if not doing this for someone else. And so Yuro responds back saying, just shut the hell up, mimicking the quotes live for others or you know you don't have to stick out. The only ones who say such things are the people who already made a name for themselves and yeah, I mean, honestly, that's that's pretty deep. Like, Yuro came from a difficult past, not being given a name, working in the shadows, following orders. I think there's definitely a clear understanding of, you know, why she's so desperate for her own sake. And in my last video, I made a prediction saying Yuta will ally with Yuro, and I'm not sure if that will be valid because of what happens in the last page of this chapter, but that kind of dialogue really increases the possibility, I think. And, you know, maybe Yuta can relate to Yuro only wanting to live for herself. You know, back when Yuta had no friends and was cursed with Rika, the higher ups wanted him dead, thinking that he was like all alone and he was a curse to society. So I'm interested to see if there will be any sort of rebellious change with Yuto and I guess like Yuta trying to help her. But yeah, continuing on, all three, Yuta, Yuto, and Ryu are all on the same roof. With anger and drive from Ishigori, Yuta and Yuto realize that he's about to pop something big. And so all three lay out their trump card. That is three freaking domain expansions. Oh my goodness, man. Jujutsu Kaisen is peak fiction right now. This is absolutely insane. And this chapter was so worth the two weeks. I can't imagine how a three-way domain battle would work. Because, you know, we've seen how two domain expansions would play out with the Gojo versus Jogo. And the more powerful, refined domain would take over the other. But three domain expansions, like, what the hell, man? The Culling Game stocks are going up with this Sendai colony, and... Uh, I love how, like, Yuta, despite knowing that this is going to be a very messy and complicated battle, he's still keeping his cold demeanor, while the others are clearly driven with madness, especially Ishigori, like, look at that man, that guy's going crazy. But yeah, I'm interested to see all three of their domains, how it would look, how this will play out, if Yuta actually has his own domain expansion, or if it's gonna be Druv's domain, I don't know, but definitely let me know in the comments which you guys thought about this chapter. Thoughts on Rika, thoughts on Euro, this whole battle in general, any predictions how this is going to work out. I'd love to hear your thoughts. As you guys know, I do read the comment section. But uh, yeah, thank you all so much for watching another one of my Jujutsu Kaisen chapter reviews. It's been the fake weed. 
Animal. Peace.